Would you please pray with me? Gracious Lord, thank you for sharing your compassion with us, for coming to us in our harassed and at times helpless situations. And thank you, Lord, because the harvest is plentiful and the laborers are few that you send us, that you send your missionaries, your representatives like Valerie and Susan to minister to the people in Shonwini, South Africa. Pray, Lord, that you would come to us now and your word that we would receive all the gifts of your kingdom as you share your compassion with us now. Bless the words of my lips and the meditations of all of our hearts that today we might all know that whatever our situation is, that you come to us. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to read the first four verses of our gospel uh, reading for today one more time. And I think that after having heard that wonderful presentation from Valerie and Susan, that you will hear these words in a fresh context. This is from Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through 38. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. This is our text, grace to you. And mercy from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What is so amazing when you read this text for today in Matthew chapter 9, you see again so very, very clearly that Jesus goes to the people. Salvation History would be completely different if Jesus had just gone and sat on a rock someplace and waited for us to come to him. That isn't how it works. Jesus always comes to us regardless of the situation in which we find ourselves. And sometimes that situation is a difficult situation. It is a desperate situation. But Jesus comes to us and what does the text say? He shows his compassion. Galilee was a huge territory in, in, in Israel. It was made up of many different villages and towns and cities. In fact, one time, about 2,000 years ago, Galilee carried the title of Galilee of the Nations because there were so many people there, so many different language groups, so many different cultures, so many different nationalities. And Jesus went to them in their own situation. He took the initiative and he went to them. All kinds of different situations. He went to them in their, to celebrate their weddings with them. That was his first miracle at Cana in Galilee. Uh, we have a, a renewal of vows ceremony today after this service. Jesus is going to be there as a part of this renewal of, uh, of vows. Jesus goes to people wherever they are. He gets in fishing boats. He goes out fishing with the guys. I don't know if he was all that excited about it all the time. Remember he fell asleep one time, but he was there. He participated in the fruits of the harvest. Jesus was there. He, he laughed with the people. He cried with the people in the midst of their crises, in the midst of their, their, their mourning, midst of their grief. Jesus was there, and he wept with them. Christ knew their needs, and yet he purposely entered into their lives. And he knows our needs, too, when he comes to us. The text says that when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. That word harassed, I think it softens it up too much when we say harassed. No, they were harassed. They were bugged, they were bothered. They had all kinds of different situations in their lives that they were facing just like you and I are. Maybe they were teased, maybe they were... Maybe they were bullied, maybe they were abused by someone close to them, or perhaps, perhaps the system in which they, they live. 
Maybe some of them were wondering how they were going to make it to retirement or what they were going to do after retirement. Maybe some of them were struggling with, with health problems. But whatever it was, they were feeling harassed. And Jesus enters into that harassment and he brings his compassion to them. And others were helpless. The Greek word for helpless in this text is, is pipto. And it refers oftentimes to an animal that has fallen over and can't get up and is in this very vulnerable, very vulnerable position. The animal can't take care of itself, can't feed of itself, is, is, is perhaps prey to the different predators that are around there, totally dependent upon someone else. And Jesus uses that word, pipto, to talk about people. They are helpless. They've fallen down, and they can't get up. They're struggling. They're let down. They're dejected. They're downcast. They're feeling abandoned, and more generally, to everyone who faces problems that they cannot fix themselves. Jesus goes to them and shows them his compassion. Jesus doesn't wait for the people to pull themselves up by their own bootstraps. He doesn't go to them to try to whip them into shape. He doesn't go to them and give them 15 principles for better living. He goes to them in their harassed and helpless situation, their troubles and their worries, and he goes to them and he gives them the gifts of his kingdom and he lifts them up. This is such a clear presentation of the gospel because it goes so contrary to what we uh, hear in our society today that says if you just work harder and just try harder, maybe you'll get it right and then maybe God will love you. This is a complete reversal of our world system where Jesus doesn't say, come and get yourself right with me. Jesus comes to us and he says, I will give you my righteousness. I'm the one who makes you right with God. I will lift you up out of whatever situation you find yourself to make you right with me. And what is so awesome in all of this, it's in the help with the helpless and, the, and the, the harassed people, these crowds that Jesus is looking out upon, where he sees the harvest. Jesus isn't looking at the harvest with people that have finally got it all figured out. Jesus is looking out a crowd of people that are harassed and helpless that need his compassion. And he tells them that, that this is the harvest. He calls his disciples and he says, he, he sends them out, he says, because this is the harvest to those people who are struggling, who have, who have needs. That's always been Jesus' ministry to show compassion, to bring the mercy of God. From the very beginning, his ministry is to bring compassion and the mercy of God to sinners, to the poor in, in spirit, to the, to the widow and to the homeless, to the fatherless, to those who mourn, to the, bind up the wounded, and to seek and to save the lost. That was Jesus' ministry in the beginning. It is his ministry today, and it is his ministry forever. Here's a good example of what Jesus is, is trying to say and what he actually puts into action. Remember when Jesus was reclining at the table with the tax collectors and, and the sinners and the Pharisees went to Jesus' disciples and they said, how, how can this possibly be that your own rabbi is eating with tax collectors and sinners? And when the disciples told Jesus what the Pharisees had said, this is how Jesus responds. He says, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick Go and learn what it means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I came not to call the righteous but sinners. That's the harvest. The harvest is, is for struggling people, for harassed people, for, for troubled people, for helpless people, for people who don't feel that God's, God loves them. Jesus comes to us and says, God loves you, and I'm going to show you how much because I'm going to die for you on a cross. And I'm going to show you how much I love you because not only am I going to die for you, but I am going to conquer death and I'm going to conquer sin and I'm going to conquer Satan once and for all and I'm going to rise again. And I'm going to give you the promise of my kingdom so that you can live in that kingdom with me forever. If Jesus just sat on that rock and waited for the people to come to him, how would the blind have been able to find their way? 
Jesus gives them sight and he shows them that he is the light of the world and he guides them with his love and compassion. How would the lame have ever made it to Jesus if he was just waiting for us to come to him? No, Jesus goes to the lame and to the crippled and he lifts them up and he heals them and, and he goes to them with his love and compassion. And because we've received that, and because the harvest is plentiful, we receive these gifts of the kingdom. Jesus called his first disciples, his first pastors, sends them to give these gifts of the gospel, of, uh, of ministering to, to those who had fallen, to the mourning, to those who were wounded. He sends them, his disciples to them, and then receiving those gifts of the kingdom, they are sent out to share God's love with other people. That happened here at Bethlehem this, this past week. A hundred kids here every day. And 50 to 60 of you. The laborers are few. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. But you have heard the, the cries of Jesus. You have received the gifts of the kingdom. And 50 to 60 of you showed up here every day this past week to love these children. We do that when we go to the shelter. We do it in our preschool. We do it when we send missionaries to, to Guatemala. And we do it when we support the ministry and the mission in South Africa. Pastor Twala is a called pastor to give those people the gifts of the kingdom, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, to administer the sacrament, and thereby nourish the people moved to share the love and the compassion of Jesus. We, we have an opportunity to support Pastor Twala. This past week, I, I think I went to the hospital five different times. Met with a mourning family. And usually I just, when there's a crisis situation, I go out to my car and I drive to wherever the, the need happens to be and it takes 15 minutes to a half an hour and I'm there. When there's a crisis situation in Pastor Twala's ministry, he has to wait for a bus or get in a taxi and wait for it to fill up and perhaps a couple of hours later get there. We have an opportunity to help him get a vehicle. I can't imagine doing ministry without a vehicle to get to the people. We have an opportunity to help him to do that. He needs about $10,000 to get that, that car. And what an honor it is for you and I to support that ministry because the harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. Tell Pastor Twala, who is a called and ordained servant of the word, a shepherd, who has been called to bind up the brokenhearted and to announce the forgiveness of sins, to be a father to the fatherless, and to preach the good news of Jesus' death and resurrection, that is the gift that God has given to us. But because he's given us these gifts of his kingdom, it moves us to support the ministry in Shonwani, South Africa. And I hope all of you will help support that in response to Christ's compassion for you. Because Jesus has come to us in our time of need. And he moves in us now to help others in their time of need. The harvest is plentiful. The workers are few. Jesus needs us, needs your compassion, so that Pastor Twala can show the compassion of Jesus to those people. May it be so for Jesus' sake. Amen.
politicians will end with, let us pray to the Lord, to which the congregation will reply, Lord, have mercy. For the church, that she would faithfully continue the work of the twelve apostles, and that God would bless her every effort to enlarge his flock, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord have mercy. For those called to be fathers, that God would strengthen and preserve their faith, so that they may be well equipped to lead and teach their households, grant rest and peace of mind to all who are overwhelmed by the responsibility of their vocation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who desire to be fathers, that God would give them peace, wait with them and comfort them with the assurance of his perfect will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those who are sick and suffering, that God would look with compassion upon his servants who are facing mental or physical illness, surgery, pain, loneliness, or grief. Especially this day, we pray for Christine Blair, Susan Desir, <coughs> Sue Krukowski, Norm Matmuller, Jeannie Roman, Alan Warner, the family of Kay Cannon, Martha Fisher, Kimberly Gildersleeve, Eileen Morgan, David Spryer, Faye Williams, Barbara Cooper, Dennis Kruger, Gloria Human, Kathleen Olive, Tanner Tislau, Tim Welch, and George Sakeli. That they may be reminded that they are not facing these things alone and be comforted with the hope of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For those who receive the good gifts of the Lord's Supper, that with repentant hearts they would receive the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior <laughs> Jesus Christ. For the strengthening of their faith and to the benefit of their neighbor, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, and who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take heed, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as ye drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Brother Gordon, take me. This is the true body of our Lord given. true body and blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
strengthen and preserve you in this realm of your faith. Now,
has strengthened and preserved you steadfast in the one true faith, now and into life everlasting, depart in his peace. Amen. Let us return thanks. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son to reconcile us to you, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this Eucharistic feast. As we have shared in the benefits of our Savior's death, may we now go forth to share his life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. We remain standing for our closing hymn, Faith of Our Fathers. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.